Welcome to another scintillating video in the HLC Chronicle series. This video will be focusing on the importance, the key features, and the needs under Criterion 1 and 2, the mission and vision statements, and the role of integrity here at Highlands. And if after watching this video you want to see more, you can find quite a few more of these videos on the NMHU accreditation page. As always, we start with the mission and vision statements for Highlands. As I have stated in every other video on HLC you have seen, these two statements really do drive everything else we do at Highlands. So having a general sense of these statements say there's always a good point to start any conversation on whatever else we want to do here, and therefore what the HLC expects us to be doing as well. As we continue to connect the dots for HLC, we see the mission and vision leading up to the strategic plan and on and on. Criterion 1 and 2 gives you the basis for all that we do to achieve all the dots leading up to the HLC overview. As we are learning, the HLC is reviewing what we should be doing anyway, even if the HLC didn't exist. So to emphasize how important our mission and vision statements are, it's our alpha to the HLC's omega. It's a start of all we do. It drives the much more recognizable strategic plan, which drives the proverbial bus on all our goals and key performance indicators. It is well, the identity of the university. But because these statements are so all-encompassing, a true 30,000-foot view, it's often overlooked until we really need it. Here you can see that Criterion 1 covers everything that I've been talking about. But how do we let others know our story, and how does that affect us internally? Do potential students, the public, the state, and all other stakeholders truly know what Highlands is all about? And most importantly, are we relevant in today's world with our stated mission and mission and vision statements. Because if our statement said that we were proponents of the horse and buggy, we may one day find that we're being left behind. So by getting input from all constituents here at Highlands, getting drafts and feedback, getting the Board of Regents to approve it, and then posting it for the public to review, we have started the process of articulating it publicly. But a mission statement on the website or on a piece of paper on the wall is real only a thread. Kind of like Schrodinger's cat for you quantum mechanic fans in a further enigma in quantum superposition, or as lawyers say, not worth the paper it's being printed on. Either way, we all need to have a better understanding or even a basic understanding of what the university we work for stands for. Under C1B, are we committed to the public good? We're in an open enrollment institution accepting most all academically qualified students. We do graduate students with skills needed not only in the areas of Highland, but also throughout New Mexico, in the world, really. And we impart upon them the necessary skills and qualifications to be contributing members of society. So if we're doing all of that, then we've got that covered. Under this component, do we produce thinkers? Well, we certainly provide all with the opportunity to be informed, conversant, and engaged in today's world. Can we, or any university, provide everything that each and every student needs in all situations or parts of the world? Probably not, but by quote, fostering creativity, critical thinking, and research in the liberal arts, sciences, and professions, we do give all students a good foundation. So again, from our mission and vision statements, we can derive our strat plan, diversity statement, budget, and our plans, find our enrollment profiles, engage the communities we serve, and allow our key units to operate. So yeah, the MNV is vitally important on a number of levels. In fact, you may now be convinced that the next time we review these for relevancy, that you best be involved to at least state your convictions on the future of Highlands. Moving to Criterion 2 Integrity, we look at ethical and responsible conduct. I have taught a few business ethics classes in my time and have dealt with many business people who had and did not have integrity. And so while I may have the experience, like I'm sure you do too, we should also know that different people have different levels of integrity that may be below or even above our own. And while you may think that right or wrong, to A, ask if we have a fair and ethical process for Heinz. Don't doesn't ask for a perfect or foolproof process because mine might be different than yours or the regents at men, faculty, or staff. But invoking Voltaire, let not perfect be the enemy of the good, as sometimes compromise is the only solution. 
And the important thing here is to clearly state our processes and policies for the students and the public to allow them to decide whether those processes and policies are something that an individual or a group can accept in coming to or dealing with hybrids. Under C2C, can the regions make informed and independent decisions in the best interests of highlands under the conditions they operate? In other words, are they provided with facts and figures, sometimes contradictory, in order to make the best possible decisions in the best interest of highlands? And with C2D, are students hearing and are instructors free to discuss, sometimes opposing and again contradictory sides to all arguments? We are seeking to graduate critical thinkers, which means sometimes that healthy and respectful disagreement takes place within the confines of the classroom. And finally, with 2E, are the students, staff, and faculty provided with learning opportunities, both inside and outside the classroom, providing all with at least the knowledge and skills of how to understand all points of view on a particular subject, allow critical thinkers to decide for themselves on certain things? Not like things like whether sticking a knife into an electrical outlet is a good idea or bad, ask me, I have the scar, but on philosophical issues that define a person, not disfigure them. So where do we define integrity, ethics, and responsible conduct in Highlands? Here you can see a few examples, handbooks, policies, minutes, procedures, accreditations, etc. That tells the world who we are and what we're all about. So the good news on Criterion 1 and 2 is that these are rarely cited as areas of concern by the peer reviewers or the HLC. Why? Because we set them. If we said we were all meat eaters or all vegans, or somewhere in between, and said those are our driving principles for all at Highlands, the HLC could not say anything regarding our choices. They would simply test to see if we're walking the talk. And if we are, the HLC finds us in compliance. However, that is not to say we cannot be cited under C1 or C2 because we can say we're doing something without providing any proof of doing that thing. Or we could say that we're only beef eaters or pescatarians or something else that they do not understand or perhaps is considered too restrictive. And pescatarians eat fish but not meat in case you are ever a peer reviewer for the HLC. And of course we could say one thing and really not be doing that or maybe doing something entirely different from what we say. So the HLC has essentially given us the rope, then what we do with that rope is up to us. So C1 and C2 are not the hardest to pass sections, 4, 5, and 3 are in that order, but you can still get cited if you are not in compliance with any of the criterions. Now, knowing what you know about 1 and 2, maybe you want to get involved, and if you do, Here is that information on the people you can contact with any questions regarding the HLC or accreditation at Highlands. As always, thanks for watching this video.